Hello and welcome to the I Unbox podcast. I'm your host, Sonic Guru, and our co host, Nikki17. And get ready for another 45 to an hour of news and events that interest you and us. Hmm. Yeah, I oh. should write a script for the intros. <laughs> I don't know. See how, see if we could change. I bet the last one was a better intro. All right. Well, whatever. Let's roll. <laughs> anyway, how have you been? I'm all right for the most part. Uh, been dealing with things and bits and bobs. Um, obviously, one thing we're going to get onto is um, a bit of an update to a certain Sonic game. But uh, funny enough, be- funny enough, I've actually just replayed Sonic Generations for the first time in ages, and oh boy, I'm out of whack with that bad boy. Like, <laughs> it's, it's funny. Weird, it's weird playing a game with a completely new gameplay style and going back saying, "Yeah, you did, did you know that the boost is a completely different button?" Exactly, yeah, especially when it's like, oh, yeah, it was meant to be that thing as well. Oh, that's yeah. the drift. That's the drift. Yeah. <laughs> Remember drifting where you can actually manually control it? Mm. God damn. Yeah, I mean, it's, again, it's still a blast to go through that. I mean, particularly since how many people have pointed out is obviously in the cyberspace levels, they're reusing certain things from that game into Frontier. So it's interesting seeing the difference. I have definitely noticed the difference. That said, though, I mean, I'm not as enrages other people i definitely see why people are annoyed but that's again it'll be interesting to see if they do any more changes up with the further updates with it oh definitely i hope we get some more levels in future updates mm-hmm. uh, i've been playing that as well i've been going back and forth in a lot of games mainly i'm trying, I'm trying to finish my primary mastered i've got to the last part i have the phase on suit i have the plasma cannon Mm-hmm. Now it's just like, hey, all those areas you went to, yeah, go to every single one of them and go find the artifacts. You got to do the Chozo um, runabout, have you? Yeah, I'm up to that point, which <laughs> I got a couple of the harder ones out of the way, like taking down the elite pirates and the Chozo ghosts, which um, from zero punctuations with you, yeah, Chozo ghosts are a pain in the ass, but they're yeah. not the worst enemy in the game. I mean, it is funny to thinking, you know, spirits that attack you. I mean, isn't that a wonderful way of... Yeah, that game? they're annoying because they appear frequently after areas that should not, you know, just be like enemy free or just have the flying bugs. Mm. But no, they appear, appear in areas you don't want them to appear in. Uh. Every time you leave the room, do something, come back through the room, they respawn. Oh, God. Oh, and only rarely do you have to face them once. I think only twice so far to face them once and it just unlocks the next area. Right. right, going back to the first plant boss, can't remember his name. You go back there, you have to fight three Chozo ghosts, and then you get an artifact. Oh, dear. Like, but other times, yeah, it's annoying. They're not, I, I do think the elite pirates and the armored pirates are worse because you have to switch up your switch your weapons. Yeah, I know the Chozo ghosts only are weak to the power cannon and especially mm-hmm. the super missiles, but. Yeah, the, the, the space powers where you have to use specifically ice plasma and wave. That's 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 annoying. I hate yeah. those. Those are worse for me. Yeah, but I'm just curious. I mean, obviously in that game, particularly Metroid Prime One, is obviously you have to manually switch each mode. I mean, in Prime Three, wasn't it like every ability stacks on? So you oh yeah, be- because they can only use one button. Mm. It was until the actually Prime until the new Play Control trilogy came out. Yeah, they they stacked the beams. Yeah. So, so you'll use the plus button to change the visors, whereas in yeah. Prime Two and Prime One and Two and Trilogy, plus and minus were changing visors and cannons. Right. Then. Yeah. Which, yeah, I can see. I can see. I'm looking forward to Prime Two get remastered because this was obviously a smash hit, mm. uh, officially a smash hit, but still. Mm. I'm kind of curious about it because again, it's like how much would you say has been changed? Because again, that's what uh, Yati talked about is that it is more or less a cosmetic changeover. There isn't too much. Oh, it mainly is visuals, visuals yeah. and control, visuals and controls. Mm. Because I'm so I'm so, yeah, I'm so used same. to now holding down the R trigger and pressing the uh, mm. D pad in a direction to change the visors rather than the C C stick or D pad. Mm. D pad is used for cannons because that's quicker for me. Yeah, but they haven't fundamentally changed the layouts of how the levels are done, or they've extended or shortened anything in particular, if you noticed. Oh, no. It is pretty much a one-to-one. Okay. Because it's not like, it's like I said, it's remastered. A remaster is basically the same freaking game you're playing, whereas a remake, like the recent Resident Evil 4, completely mm. new from the ground up, and what worked and what didn't gets thrown or upgraded. Mm, yeah, I mean, we are living in the regeneration of gaming at the minute, you know, remakes, remasters, reimaginings, and 
particularly our mate uh, Junior, has got a bit of a beaner's bonnet to what defies that and some developers kind of misusing the term to certain degrees, but that's a whole other discussion, I think. <laughs> yeah, we have the great we have for gaming so far. Three months in, what do we get? Dead Space remade, Re- Retro Prime remastered, and a remake of Resident Evil 4. Hmm. Yeah. Like it's, said, it insert what year is it from from Japan? <laughs> yeah, that's the problem now that we have to go by, you know, this is how Google will figure it out. It's basically you have to put in the date it came out now, you know, like what year did it come out? Oh, you, you want to talk about that? How about the fact that the Last of Us, the Last of Us Part 1 has been remade twice? Well, yeah, we had the original Last of Us for PS3, you got the original version, then you got the remastered version for PS4, and then the remake, effectively known as Part 1. So at least they're somewhat consistent with the name. And that got ported to the PC recently. Yeah. So effectively, there are four versions of the same damn game. (laughs) Angry Joe has taken his old Last of Us 1 review and sharpened up and remastered it four times. Oh, God. (laughs) That's his running joke, and I love it. Right. <laughs> anyway, moving on to the uh, first of our new stuff, which we talked about last time, but this came very freaking quickly after we talked about it. Mm-hmm. We talked about it, and then two days later, hey, March 27th, no, March 24th is coming out. Yeah. Like, what? Yeah, we do have a tendency of saying certain things, and then the day or two later after we recorded it, it happens, so there's a there's a thing for us. On oh, the next next topic coming up, I freaking prepared for it. Um, yes, I mean you're prepared <laughs> for the next one. So we got the first update of Sonic Frontiers. This is the sight, sounds, and speed update. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a very good photo mode, which mm-hmm. gorgeous pics with some with some very like rudimentary controls. You kind of get you have to get used to it pretty quick. Yeah, I've got some things to say about that. But yeah. Karen. Um, a few filters which. It's kind of a shame that Snapchat still has better th- better filters for the ca- for, fil- for the photos, mm. but they're good. You know, just oversaturation, old timey sepia. You know, the standard stuff. Yeah. Uh, which you take some people that are taking some really beautiful shots, and what's even yeah. better is that the PC version has the mods. So you can change the models. You can change the update the graphics. Like there is a um, texture update. Can't remember what it's called, and it makes the game look so much better. Yeah, yeah, Add yeah. That to the photo mode, and wow, you can take a picture of that and put it as the new box art. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because uh, one of the first things, because again, I've been trying out. I mean, the moment the game came out, I did think to myself, why does this not have a photo mode? Because there are some areas of the game, it's like you could easily put one in here, it would work. And it's like, oh, finally put it in. And again, as you said, there's been some people that are making amazing picks with it. I am kind of surprised how close you can get with Sonic in these, with this camera mode, actually. It's funny because I tried a few other ones from other games like Doom Eternal, Spider-Man, and even Psychonauts 2 has it. And each one has a different thing, which I'll get to. But yeah, I'm surprised, actually, they do allow you to get up close quite a bit to the main player character in this. Yeah, unfortunately, you can't go through them, or even the geometry. It's yeah, like, that's... It's, it's, it's in the way, including Sonic, you cannot go through. You cannot no clip anywhere with that camera. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned it before because it treats everything as an object as a solid thing, so you can't clip through certain things. Basically, that's kind of the cheap way of doing some of these things. Makes sense. Anyway, you don't you can't just like go through the bride and groom at a wedding. It's like, can I go through you? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> lovely teeth, lovely teeth. Is that a gold one? Lovely teeth. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, that is you know, if you're a particular person who's anal about getting the per- the perfect shot, this stuff will drive you mad. In fact, there were a few times where I was using it. It's like, I wanted to get like, I forgot the angle, but I just couldn't get over like a little bit of geometry or a thing in the way. So I yeah, had to end up- I had, I spent 15 minutes trying to get the perfect shot of Sonic grinding towards the Fortress Guardian. Mm-hmm. I didn't Ooh. use any filters. I just kind of angled it and just like, okay, up, down, no, that goes left and right. Okay, that diagonal, because I had tilt everything as well. That tilting controls. It, is if you're gonna use use the tilting controls, make sure you get the angle up first, then tilt. Yeah, yeah, because it because will just damn. Yeah, it is so infuriated. It is worse than the controls of Mario Galaxy when you're upside down. <laughs> oh dear. One thing I've noticed about the camera is that obviously it's designed to work in the air quite very well. I mean, it's very free flying. It's like when you get to the ground, and this is something else I noticed. In fact. Prior to this, I did some photos. I took an image of um, Sonic next to the gear in the second island because it has this like glow onto it. And again, it's funny because I was able to, and I positioned it in a way that I always looked like it was radiating sunlight from him. Basically, I even jokingly called it like the Messiah of the Cocos, you know, as a gag. Um, 
so again, I was able to do that with just like the base camera settings. So I thought like, oh, if they could do this, I could do this button mode. And I realized if you were to say you set it up in a way in the main game and you go to the photo mode and you want to try and like, oh, I'm going to zoom in a bit more or whatever, it will end up disorienting that sort of things because it won't get very close to the ground. That's one thing I've discovered. This will not, you know, if you want to get a close up, you have to use like the focus, I think the zoom in, zoom out, focal, whatever you want to call it, mode for it. Yeah, you have a zoom in, you have a move in, which you just move the camera forward. Yeah, you know, it's like a sort of like up to zoom as well, which is doesn't really go that far. No, but it's like it allows you to like at least if you want to angle things up a bit more to like cut things out of the view. That's the way to use it. Um, but yeah, that was the only real drawback I had with it. Is then it's just like I said, there were just some moments where on the ground I would take some pretty. If I wanted to just have the camera tilt up quite a bit, I wouldn't be able to do it. So. It's a bit of a, it seems limited in that aspect. Um, but in terms of anything else, I will say one thing that surprised me was I was, um, long story short, I, one thing I did is I, I started using the camera mode and then I thought like, oh, I want to use this for the the scene with Sonic and Amy at the, the Rose Field, the little cutscene that plays just before that. And I had an early say, I went back there and I thought like, oh, okay, I'll do this. I'll wait for the weather to move. And I'm just prattling around. But the thing was that all of my all of my game um, save was on the auto saying. So basically, whatever you do automatically saves. And I thought, oh shit, I just saw the icon. Wait, did I? Oh God, I've, I've raised all my data up to the third island. So, oh God, what am I going to do? But then I luckily I had another saved, obviously, for the second island. So I had to do an entire day just getting me back up to where I was before. But in that time, I did manage to take a lot of um, photographs with it. And I will say that I am quite happy and pleased with some of the stuff I was able to do. If I want, I love the grid system they have in there that allows you to like figure out, you know, each cult, like basically three sets of squares are able to like view out things. Oh, I can have it in that square and that square and able to position things to go away, which is good. I mean, for something as simple as that, it does help a lot. Yeah, we like photo mode. It's just it's something that, it, like you said, it was needed for a game like this. Yeah, because again, there are moments where you just stop and you look at the landscape. It's like, yeah, this is design. This game needs it. And like I said, it's there are some cases where I was able to take a photo of the second boss the, as you go up the tower just before you jump on it. I managed to get this very elaborate. I might put these in the next thing, so if you want to see what we're talking about, I'll be there. But yeah, there yeah, are some stuff... In the, in the pinned comment below. Exactly, yeah. So we did do that. I'm also surprised you were able to use it during the boss fights. That's the thing that surprised me the most. It's like they clearly wanted this used for people from the boss fights, and it's like, wow, they really they allowed you to use it during those bad boys. Yeah, um, the other parts of the update was the um, uh, challenges, the Cyberspace Cyber Challenge and the Battle Rush. Cyberspace yeah. Challenge basically just play through every Cyberspace stage on each island. Mm. So all of Kronos, all of Ares, all of Chaos, and all of Oranus. Mm. Or Oranus. Or Oranus. Or Oranus. Basically, I don't know. Uh, four islands. basically the four islands that you can Our use. Rob, our Ross. There we go. They're all right. <laughs> but to get your um, sick islands. Then, apparently, once you've done all of that with an A or S rank, hmm. you've got to do every single one in a row. Oh, every cool. single one. Oh, dear. And the oh. same applies with a battle rush where you have to fight all these smaller enemies to the Titan. So hmm. you start with soldiers, then you get the stronger ones, and then the lower end Shinobi to towers, then finally Giganto. Right, okay. Do that again for every other island. Hmm. Then do every single one in a row. Right. <laughs> and you have to play them in that order. You can't, like, you know, if you play them once, you can't skip to, like, I want to play the big boss battle again or something like that. Not that I know of. I haven't done all of them. Right, okay. I got okay. through one of them, and I got a seed rank because um, Ashura, I couldn't, for, for some reason, I kept falling off Ashura's arm. Right. So I was going S, S, S. Because to get an S rank, it's not just get an S rank individually, it's mm. accumulative. Yeah. So if it takes you 45 minutes to do everything, apparently the S rank is 30 minutes. Right. Okay. So that's the limit. It's like you have to do everything under a time limit rather than individually. Oh, uh, you, got you got most S's, so you get an S rank. Right. Oh, boy, that would, that would drive me nuts, I'll tell you that. Yeah. So... That is the point of the most fun and the point of the most rewarding is the battle rushes where you have to pretty much learn the combos and which yeah. you figure out what. Because I am not looking forward to fighting the fucking caterpillar again. <laughs> oh, ghost. I don't like those guardians. 
Mm. Go see the pain in the ass. It's interesting because it's the only guardian that runs away from you. Uh. Because you have you activate actually you you find this it's on Arona's island. You run around this the statue and ghost appears. Mm. He curses you and you have to go through on some platforming to destroy a another tower destroy a tower and he moves on to an next one like four times. Oh uh, right, okay. It's an interesting guardian, but I don't like it. No, I mean, I remember in Doom Eternal there was one demon where it would, you know, it would come at you and it would slash you, you'd be cursed, and it would just drain your health and shield down. And of course, the only way to stop it was to go off and um, glory kill it because your speed was impediment. You couldn't use your abilities that much. You could, people did find out you could cheese your way and able to kill it with your guns. But again, it was just annoying, like, oh, God, I have to deal with this bugger in the middle of a brawl. Yeah. And the final thing about it was a jukebox. Well, there's actually two more, actually. First, there's a jukebox, which, mm. hey, you got another collectible to go around, which was completely optional, but I got them all anyway. And the selection of music they chose for each island. I'm, you know what? Great choices. Okay. <laughs> absolutely great choices. Like Kingdom Valley for Ares, for Kronos Island. It works. <laughs> it fits. Kingdom Valley from 2006. Again, they probably don't want to freaking reference again since yeah, the game that generation. Decides, yeah, don't want to talk about basically. We don't talk I don't know. About I think it. Sonic 06 is in that, in that stage right now. It's like, you know what? It probably wasn't that bad. No, it's still <laughs> oh a bad God. game. Okay. Oh Sonic 06 is still fundamentally the game that was. Sold to us on star shelves is bad. It is a bad game. Yeah. Music that's fantastic. Said. At least yeah, yeah. at least has appeared in the official Sonic Channel artwork, skate yeah, um, skate ice skating with silver. Yeah. And she looks beautiful in this new art style. Yeah, I did see that. I mean somebody did point out thinking, oh, it took them this long to finally do humans and animals uh in an art style that actually works. They're thinking, eh, something unleashed did it a few years earlier, man. I did it a few years earlier. That's why I was so confused about Sage. It's like, she's human. Why are you bringing a human? Oh, yeah, because, you know, everything is canon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we decided, yeah, they, they just live on the same planet if we're going by that canon city now. But anyway, um, yeah, the jukebox thing. I will say that um, before my save messed up, I did manage to get one of the tunes, and the very first one I managed to find on the third island was Live and Learn. So I was like, oh, okay, got the big one out of the way. Yeah, Live and Learn. Um, fist bumps in there. Mm-hmm. The World Adventure, which is obviously, you needed the World Adventure. <laughs> even wonder even wonder world's there as well ah wow <laughs> yeah the, the orchestral theme for lost world that's just weird I, thought, well, I mean i like the theme of uh, lost I, world i like the theme as well it's just an odd choice for me yeah i mean it's, 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 the game the areas are going in in that game at least that's the thing i'm kind of curious like how in a pro i mean which would you say is that one of the most like this is to fit the tone of the game type songs in the game. Fit, it doesn't fit the tone really like even though like um arid sands in on the on Ares island mm-hmm um, you know, what was it? Um, I can't remember the freaking location now. It's not Adabas, uh, the Savannah one, right? The the India one from India. Oh, okay, yeah, the desert one. There you go. Yeah, Shama, wasn't a... There we go. Shama. Okay, there we go. It's kicked in. I got it eventually. I wasn't. I wasn't gonna fucking Google it. Fuck that. Yeah, I didn't notice. Uh, in the... Yeah, yeah, that. For Aries Island, it's a lot more bouncy and very, you know, upbeat, but it works. Hmm. I was going to say, especially for a desert area. I mean, uh, I think someone did. Isn't um, Let the Speed Bender in the game, or is somebody? Oh yeah, it is. It oh is. right, that, that, would, that would totally fit. That would totally fit the desert yeah, area. It, it says it's not. It's not. It's kind of odd. They actually do sometimes use the main theme titles, but other times they just use the level theme. So even though it's called Let the Speed Bend It, they yeah. just call it Sand Oasis. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, a lot of the tracks, it pretty freaking works. Like Sky Sentry's in there. The well, the modern modern Sky Sentry themes in there. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I, I don't know why the other one fit really well. It shouldn't fit, but I love it. Is Lava Reef on Chaos Island? <laughs> yeah, right around there's this, there's the Sentinel Death Egg robot, and there, here's a volcano, and it's like it's a miserable freaking island. I just in the background. I'm yeah, happy on this island that I really hate. I know, yeah. I mean, I, what I played of that island, I mean, it is the track of that is very somber. It's meant to be much more like, yeah, welcome to an ash field, basically, folks. And um, it's just having that music instead. Oh, my God. Um, yeah, the final thing was some quality of life updates. And 
these should have been included on the initial release. Mm. But you know what? As fans, we rushed them. They wanted to get a game out and focus more. They focused more on the story and the get and the gameplay and the presentation. Yeah, I mean, the, yeah, more the than the actual quality of life and any additional stuff like photo modes and boss rushes. Yeah, that was again, cool. three million copies sold before the update. Yeah, that's something. Apparently, it's outsold Sonic Heroes, which apparently held the record for the most sold Sonic games, apparently. I thought it was Generations. Yeah, me too. I thought Sonic Generations would have beaten that, but apparently Heroes was the biggest seller for a long time, apparently, out of the series. I mean, we could be wrong. If we are, I'll put it in the notes. But anyway, yeah, that was the big news that came out with... I'm trying to remember know, what the quality of life updates were. <laughs> I can't remember what they were. But again, I again, know the director has been again on Twitter. We said before, it's like he wants to fix up the game and like spruce off and fix stuff. I mean, he's particularly said that I want to fix up the final boss of the game or at least do something with it rather than what yeah. it is. In the the, first of all, you can actually turn off the power boost animation. Yeah, that's frankly. one thing. That's, that's one thing. It's like it's one of those things you look at and it's like, yeah, this will never get old. Like, it got old fast. It got yeah. old really fast. Okay, like, hey, it's, it's like the movie. Hey, it's like the movie. Yeah. How often does this play every time you get max rings? Yeah. Which Shit. Is, yeah, but it's particularly if you're trying to do something. Like sometimes if I want to like head off to literally face off with something or whatever, it's like I want to get that done. So I, I want to get max speed, max boost, you know, whatever, max ring capacity. So I can just head off and do the thing. But one actually trick I learned, and this is only I discovered it, is for the side loop, if you use the, if you do like a figure eight, it'll, the boost will actually be infinite for a while instead of like draining out like a little stamina bar. It'll be yeah. infinite for a bit. So you combine that with the max ring count, that is, oh God, you do yeah. move about. Especially when you're level 99. <laughs> yeah, and I got The other thing they actually fixed was if you want to turn off the Celestial Storm slot machine, yes. you can. You I can, did yeah. straight the fuck away. Hmm. I hate that. Hey, what about this what about slot machine and earn more rings? No thanks. Too late! <laughs> I mean, they do happen, they do seem random most of the time. I mean, like, it's you go. Random. From, like, it's like every. I want to say every two to three or even four cycles of day. Right. I don't know. Maybe it is once every night, but if it's just, it feels infrequent. Mm. I think maybe two or three times. Yeah. And yeah. the final one, which I thankfully really wanted, because I wasn't going to sit down for half an hour pressing, pressing A a lot, and that is you can bulk up, level up with the Elder Coco. Yes, yes. Because I mentioned this in my worst parts of Sonic Frontiers, which is now it's like two weeks two weeks up and it's already outdated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Sega. Thanks for doing that. Um, uh, and yeah, instead of because with the with the Hermit Coco, you can actually like I've got fifty I've got fifty five of these. I can go from level one to level thirty in one go. Yeah. Yeah. I, on both of them, so that was yeah. great. Both attack and defense leveled up in bulk. Hmm. Elder Coco, one at a freaking time, rings or speed, and you hmm. have to wait and watch, wait and watch. Press what is left? Yeah. Let, me, let me move the freaking menu. Now I say, use all Coco to level up. Hmm. So if you've got a little stash of Cocos in your back pocket somewhere, put it straight into one. There you go. I went from level fifty to level ninety nine in one go. Oh god. <laughs> yeah. I, I sat down and leveled up my speed all the way, but the ring capacity, I didn't freaking bother. Mm. I, was like, yeah, like, it, I, went, I went 10 times. He's like, you know what? I just sat down 10 minutes doing this with the freaking speed. I'm not doing it again. Yeah. I mean, but, I got to admit, I, it took a while. I didn't realize actually that's how you got rid of the Herkos because after a while when I started collecting them, when you stop, obviously they all accumulate. And I'm thinking, sure, there must be a way to get rid of them. And it was like, when you go to those elder one, obviously they start disappearing. It's like, oh, wait, that's how it's meant to work. Right. I didn't realize until after the update. Oh, that's how the system works. That's silly me. Yeah. But you can still collect them. It, it's just they're there. It's a collectible if you want to do. Which yeah, is because again, I was doing what you did before, was basically I just go to it and go like, oh, I'm going to look at speed. I'll just do it until I get until I do it three times. All right, right, I'm bored. I'll do it another time. Yeah, I'm so glad for that update, and it just it feels a lot more more a more complete game because of those quality of life updates. Yeah. Like the, still... the chapter, the cyber cyber and um, battle rushes do add a lot to the game to beef it up for replay value. Oh yeah, there was another thing as well actually, they put an extreme mode in the game that basically you only get like one hit kill like if you get hit once, game over. That's another thing they put in. You are fucking kidding me. I um, know, there's literally it's in the menu, like I think that was one of the first things that popped in is then you can change your difficulties and extreme mode is like, you know 
you know, I think what was in Bioshock, Bioshock of 999 mode was like, you get killed once, that's it, game over. I remember in 999 mode, you actually go back a lot to the last checkpoint, not just revived instantly. Yeah, well, I think it depends how some games you, do that. If you want to do a comparison to me, I think it's at European Extreme in Metal Gear Solid 1 and 2. <laughs> oh, yeah, that. But like I said, you get, are... spot, you get spotted once, you're done. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. It's that level of, you've got to be kidding me. If you mess up once or hit once, that's it. <laughs> Either that or Battle Arena Toshido, where you actually have one fatal blow. Oh, boy. <laughs> all, all if you want to you in, but more relevant because golden i got released a few weeks ago it's slappers only one hit kill <laughs> yeah oh yeah that's the thing i remember you some people mock it but you know what that's the most fun i've had in golden eye <laughs> yeah as long as no one's, but, playing, but as long as no one's playing odd job yeah that's the thing i mean they were i think there's some tournaments where they basically ban you for playing odd job because they know you could just cheese it yeah yeah, but overall, I mean, the updates are done to this. I mean, you know, like I said, I'm the most excited I was for the photo mode, so I'm still going to use that, get some kicks out of it. I do hope that with the future stuff that they do improve upon it. I would love to see this in the next Sonic game. In fact, one thing I'm kind of curious they didn't put in is like, you know, when they showed the roadmap, one of them was like an image of Sonic standing up with like doing a selfie. I'm just surprised that's not in the game. That like you have like a, you know, port, you have landscape portrait mode, like with a phone skin on it. And again, I'm surprised. One other thing I'm surprised, because again, you do this in Doom, Spider Man, and Psychonauts. It's like you can swap between the characters' poses, so you can do different ones. You can position them and move them about. Uh, again, yeah, that would have been great because some of the poses, like the tricks you can do to earn more mm-hmm. skill points or yeah. skill chips, as it were. Yeah. That, yeah, you have to press pause. And there you go. Yeah, exactly. Is it the right pose? No, it isn't. Okay. Yeah, you have pause. to like keep doing, trick yeah. pause. Is it? Yeah. Shit. Yeah, it's like I said, I'm, I don't know whether the way this game is built, I don't know whether they have the capability of doing that. I would like it if they do, and if it's part of this roadmap or whatever. But again, it's something that I think they should definitely keep for future games. It's something I'd like to see them improve upon next time. Well, speaking of improvements, we now move on to the, I guess, quote, new game. <laughs> well, well, new as in it's going to get a physical release. Mm. And it's something I called out on. Yes, you did. Weeks, or well, literally a day after the freaking announcement of Sonic Origins re- announcement. Hmm. The actual yeah, yes. announcement, not, not a teaser when we first bought no, no, Where the hell, like, where the hell yeah. is the damn game? Yeah, yeah. Just Sonic Origins Plus. Yes. I called it. I will you find did. the clip and show you that I freaking called it. <laughs> Sonic <laughs> Origins like... Plus, getting a physical release as well as an art book, reversible cover, and there's a few new updates to the game as well. First of all, making Knuckles playable in Sonic CD, something that mm-hmm. should have been freaking done in the first place. Yeah. Um, Amy is now playable in all four games, which, mm-hmm. what the hell are you going to do, Sonic CD? <laughs> Amy's going to fight, Amy's going to save her clone? Uh, well, we'll wait and see. We'll wait and see if they, how they change that, if they're done. Yes, I, I will. And yes, once, once I get it, because I will get this game. Yes, I mean, this man has... I am going to play through story mode. No, no, you can't play through story mode with Amy, can you? No, shit. I will play through all <laughs> four games yeah. as Amy. Yes. Surprised you haven't done playable Amy in freaking, you know, Sonic Mania yet. Why haven't you done that? Yeah, I mean, it's... Yeah. I mean, hello, people will buy the game again for playable Amy. You know they will. You know I will. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it is kind of odd, especially given the fact that, you know, they put her on the front cover of the of the box for Origins. It's like, it kind of made you think, like, surely she's going to be playable because if they're acknowledging her as part of, like, yes, this is where she came from CD, she's part of the group now, you know, particularly with the modern series. It's like, this felt like they should have put it in in the beginning, but we'll get to that in a minute. And also adding all 12 Game Gear titles, mm. which, on the one hand, yay, because no one can freaking buy them now because it's the because the eShop got taken down yesterday. Yeah, to put this in context, the eShop, you know, Nintendo's, formerly Nintendo's way of buying stuff through the Wii and Wii U is now dead, so that's no longer a thing. The Wii U and 3DS, not Wii and Wii U. All right, then. Well, like I said, basically, it was what they used before. It's basically how you play, got these games digitally, and now it's no longer a thing. Yeah, it, they're, they're, they're shut down. Apparently, you can still download any codes you haven't used for the Wii 3DS and Wii U are still available until <laughs> April, April 3rd. Okay. So right. if you have a copy of Sonic Lost World Deadly Six Edition but have not used the Nightmare DLC code, use it Thank now you. because you will never ever be able to redeem it. 
Yeah, I mean, how we were just talking about Bosch for us mode with Frontiers. Basically, that is it, just night theme. That's basically what the whole nightmare thing is. Surprisingly fun. It is surprisingly fun. It's nice. Again, it's a nice cameo for nights, and it does work as a boss boss rush mode. Yeah. So because of that, and there's no eShop, and the eShop on 3DS had um, 10 Game Gear titles, not all 12. Yeah. And that's the only way you could play them for a long time. Luckily, yeah. I got luckily I got all of them on my 3DS. <laughs> of course you would. Of course I did. Yes. A- and Sonic 1 and 2 3D. Indeed. That was another thing that was on there for a bit that you can't get anymore. Yeah, but you're not missing now because if you you think you can still get the Sega Ages versions on Switch, and they're essentially the same thing. Right. Okay. They're the same. They're the same part. Yeah. Just lacking the 3D. Um, yeah. So all 12 Game Gear games, which is which is good. I just see it as a admission, really, not a mission. There's a word for it. I can't think of it right now. Like, yeah. Like not really a novelty. I think it's like just desperation. You have got a, a library of games that no one will have any idea that even exists sometimes. Yeah, you hear people talk about classic games all the time. It's never the eight-bit games. If yeah. anything, it's always the bad ones like Labyrinth and Blast. Yeah, <laughs> and you know the best one being Triple Trouble and Sonic Two. But that's about it. Nothing else. Mm. I'm surprised because again, it's like you know they're putting the Game Gear stuff, but not the Master Master System stuff. I mean, they've not been. I'm trying to think if they've been in any of the previous collections at all. No, they haven't. Right. Nothing. No Master System port. It's always Game Gear because I think mm. Game Gear. It's more for an American market because the yes. Master System, Sonic the Hedgehog on the Master System was the last Master System game released in in America. And it's, it's really true. rare to find a copy of it with mm. the American barcode to scan. Yeah. That little sticker makes hundreds of dollars of difference. Oh, boy. Yeah, it's a sticker, but it's worth, you, you have that, it's worth a lot. Yeah. So, yeah, Sonic 2, Spinball, Chaos, Mean Bean, never released in America. But the Game Gear versions did, and I think that's the reason why it's always the Game Gear versions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, but yeah, like I said, you know, the fact is, the other thing they must announce is like obviously a lot of the stuff that didn't work with Origins, and there's quite a bit of stuff that people didn't encounter, is going to get fixed as well once Plus Edition comes out. Which again, they're doing the same thing as saying if you own Origins digitally, you'll get a free upgrade for it, and obviously you could buy the physical version when it comes out. Yeah, it's a ten dollar. If there's the Encore edition, it's pretty much ten dollars to own. Exactly. Yeah. You get ten dollars to get the plus DLC. Mm. So Which, it's uh, I get I'll it. It's, it's the same time. Same time. Here's the thing, though. Mm. Um, the Encore DLC for Mania only costs five dollars. Mm. Why do you need extra five dollars to play as Amy and have twelve Game Gear titles? Mm. But then again, I was going to bring up the fact that when Origins did come out, there was also like, what was it, the deluxe version, which, you know, was like supposed to be saying, oh, you got all these other extras as well. Oh, yeah, the mirror modes and extra music and that. It's like, yeah, that'll be all, all on the physical release. Hmm. Hopefully. I mean, again, it's just the case of, you know, putting a lot of money into something that should have been in the main release regardless, you know, type deal. Um, I mean, give you an example. There's a guy in like called uh, Blaze Hedgehog who's done uh, a lot of. He's done actually like three videos on Origins, particularly from when it was announced to the release, and then kind of been getting to a point where he's kind of getting a bit angry because of the way how it is and the fact that there was a lot of stuff that didn't work or should have worked. And he has a really weird way of speaking because I watched him. For, I watched him for his definitive, definitive versions of playing. Yes. Versions. Yeah. Yeah, which again, it's like, again, I definitely agree with a lot of his stuff in terms of just the sh- how Sega are at least releasing these and what prices I totally get. That is, mm, that's not right. So again, the fact that we heard about this, you know, rumored, you know, plus edition of Origins for ages, the fact that, okay, this can't be just some new stuff. It has to be along with, you know, fixes and change up to make the game, make the whole collection worthwhile. Because again, they were advertising this as like the def- definitive way to play these old games. And I kind of went in, to be fair, my mindset was like, there's going to be issues, right? There's always issues when, whenever they re-release games, reports, whatever, there's always going to be some oddities and stuff. And whether it ruins... Especially, it, especially a games where they're built from the ground up specifically for these for these um, definitive versions, rather hmm. than like the ultimate, ultimate Mega Drive collection, where it was all based on emulation. Yeah, yeah. And the thing, again, is the, the thing we found out about the Origins collection was Sonic 1 and 2 were basically the mobile ports that were on for a year, so they're bringing that in, and then the main one that was getting redone was, of course, you know, 3 and K. Yeah, which had its own plethora of problems. Mm. Music notwithstanding, because... Yeah, that's a whole... It, it, I know yeah, that's, that's a whole can of worms. It's like, yeah, it's been done and dusted. 
I don't yeah. like the new music tracks, but then it, but to be able to play a re remastered version of Sonic 3 Knuckles on modern console, that's pretty much all I needed. Yeah. And as I said before, like, I can only speak for myself as, like, as I played those versions of the games, I did encounter some oddities. Like, the main thing was, like, you know, Tails getting stuck and you just keep hearing him jumping, trying to get back at you. And, like, the flashes of um, on water surface when you use a different shield. Those were, like, the main issues I had. But for the most part, the games were still the games. The only thing I didn't like was, obviously, that if you get crushed, you do seem to, if you do, if you hit high ceiling, you do get crushed way quicker than other versions of the game. That's, like, the main thing that did piss me off. But generally, it's, like, it's still those same games that I know. And, general audience you know unless you're a boss like us will know the difference most people will just accept these are the way the games play and they still are you know the good and bad depending on what they were like when they came out yeah and still, so, major, still a major problem with the origins collection is that where the fuck is knuckles chaotix that's the thing I and mean, again blaze said this as well he's in he's made, he, everybody keeps asking you though is it really a good game but then i guess the argument is it's give us a chance to play it i think even if it's crap it's like well give us a way of you playing are willing to give us all 12 game gear games which four of them have been considered very really bad yeah <laughs> like, some of them not as bad like you've got sonic labyrinth uh hmm. the 8-bit version of sonic spinball which if you try playing that recently how the That's hell probably, yeah i probably would kill myself if i tried that again sonic blast which is the you know, the worst of the four games platforming games mm. it is visually it looks pretty good but it's just so boring so dull <laughs> and lifeless there's no point to it mm. and you know the two something drift games which honestly they're not terrible no it's just a bit quirky on the controls and there you go yeah 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 but you're willing to give us you know that crap but you're not willing to give give us something that has never been ported before and only came close once mm. There are emulators on PC that can do this and render it just as good as it was on console, but you can't port it to a current console with mm. all the NVIDIA AMD shit we have. You yeah, can't do that. Yeah. It really should be part of the collection. It's an origin of the Chaotix. If you don't want to include Sega Sonic, I get that. It's an arcade game. There is yeah. different technical know-hows. But this yeah. is a console game, like cartridge, that can be run on this. I know people are going to bring up the main emulator for Sega Sonic, but it, it, it's the controls. It's the problem. Yeah. It, uses, it uses a trackball rather it's than... It's a ball. Uh, like, how do you convert... How do you track... Literally, a thing you roll with your hand and then try to do that with the D-pad guys. Yeah. Mem remember that... Remember when the PCs came out for, like, the kid... The, the kid-friendly PC mouses it was a big fucking ball? Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> it was like that. Yeah. I guess the argument you could use it for an analog because the effect of that can still the same thing. But again, it's you have to spin the damn thing as well. That's the main thing. I know you can alter probably as also people can actually alter it, like program this, like it's going this way, that way. But it yeah. knuckles chaotix. Where the hell did mm -hmm. the chaotix came from? Because also in the chaotix is mighty, and mighty is part of Sonic Mania. <laughs> I mean, again, if you brought if you brought him back and Ray, I mean, let's be fair, they were two characters that Sega were never going to do anything until they said, "Could we put them in Mania?" I like, yeah, okay, why not? Yeah, you know, it took them six years. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's just why it's just it can't be that can't be that you know bad with technical know how to not able to part a game. Yeah, again, I have no idea what goes into actually saying which games could be put in, what card, or what technical know hows of it. Again, it is odd how it is and like you said this is you know this is the most newest collection game we've had the last few years i mean undoubtedly probably 10 years from now we'll get another version of whether it'll be, it'll other, be in like, five years every five years we get a collection probably yeah but like i said i mean the thing about it and again bring up laser thing i'll put a link to it it's like he did bring up the, the thing about the about origins in general is like some of the extras you get most of it is, you know, I do love the fact that you've got the animatics for like many adventure stuff. I know some people like why they're there, but it's like that's a nice scented extra next to those things, along with the, the cutscene animations. But I, he did point out the thing is, again, it isn't really talking about a lot of the older history of Sonic. Like, yeah, it mentions like the older games and stuff, but it's like, well, what about the stuff that happened at the same time? What about like theme parks or the TV shows or the comics and stuff, which is something they did for the other collections. So it is seemingly like they're just differentiating. They seem to be getting away from that for whatever reason. So hey, I'm again, compare, I compare it to Mega Collection. Mega Collection had um, trailers for Advance Two and Match Two Battle. Mm -hmm. It had the uncompressed Sonic CD animations, which for the first time ever, that was in the was, was, was amazing because all, all, all I saw was that was the 
um, the Mega CD version, which was cropped and exactly just, a tiny screen, you know, just barely able to run a few frames. Hey, amazing at the time, but still seeing a full fledged animation, like, can we have a cartoon of this? <laughs> I'm going to be surprised they technically did. We technically did. Yeah, I'm going to be surprised they made that and thought like maybe we should do an anime of this, and they did it as a two part thing. So there you go. And also, we had a lot of illustrations and like the Archie comic covers, like every cover to that day of release. Yeah, and a full and a and a full readable comic as well. Mm, yeah, we all we have in Origins Origins and Origins Plus is just. Here's some sketches on the production, which is great to see. It's, it's great cool. To, yeah. It's great to see what Knuckles could have looked like and mm -hmm. Metal Sonic, Mecha Sonic, and Super Sonic. Yeah. Seeing how we got, I mean, a lot of the Sonic 2 stuff is completely omitted, like when it was going to be about time travel. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. like, Emerald Hill and Hilltop look identical. That's <laughs> because they were supposed to be that. Hilltop was Emerald Hill in the past. Past. Yeah. So see, seeing all of that would have been great. Hmm. But it, uh, like you said, it's like it's good to focus on the games, but at the same time, there is a lot of history of Sonic that were not being shown. Yeah, yeah. I will say, I'll, before we move on, I'll say one thing that I do think this collection doesn't do well that the other ones did was the fact that you won't be able to was not be able to save at any given point. You kind of the game now. I understand probably from a technical reason why they can't do that, and the fact that this game, you know, it will reload you from the last checkpoint, which is good. I like that fact. But again, that was something that I kind of liked about the older games is that if you wanted to say, what's the ending sequence of, say, Sonic 3, instead of going to the whole boss fight again and whatever, it's like, oh, I could just save it at the last, literally the last hit. And then there you go, I've got the whole sequence right there. Hey, you know, it was a nice little incentive to like, you know, have these little save slots that you can pick up and choose where you wanted to go. And particularly if you were doing something that you cocked up, you can go back a bit and go like, all right. But surprisingly enough, I just remember this. Apparently, there was going to be a rewind feature. Somebody looked through the files. There was going to be a rewind feature in this, like some other game collections have done. Oh, like so, Nintendo, Nintendo Switch Online. Yeah, well, some of the games have done that. Where like, to, I don't know how far it goes back, but it allows you to go back a few bits. So I am curious whether they'll implement it if it was planned for the beginning, but they didn't get in the release version digitally, if they're going to put it in this one, which I will be generally surprised if they actually do that. And well, again, they got rid of all the lives and exchanged for coins, so I don't think it will be much necessary. No, but again, it's like I would be surprised if that was just like another extra to put in the game. Again, it's like if you're gonna add more stuff in, I was like, well, why not? That's the, a nice little incentive at least. Mm. And going from one fan favorite of ours to another is Crash Bandicoot is getting a new game, and I'm not entirely sure I'm all for it. Yeah, the the, the much alluded uh, Wompoli game that was teased, talked about, and then supposed to be cancelled, and then reworked, and now it's finally coming out as Crash Team Rumble. So it's already cut up the naming tag for CTR now. Yeah, let's play CTR. Which one? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, now it's, when we ha it's bad enough when we had nat the original and Natural Fuel, but you then just call it Natural Fuel. Now we got CTR, and it's like you want to be crap. Just call it Crash Rumble. Easy. Yeah, Put it this way, we had CTR, CNK, then CTTR, which was Crest Tag Team Racing, and then we got CTR NF, Nitro Field. So at least that aspect of, all right, it's just now having to call this, you know, just Rumble now. Yeah. And it's primarily a multiplayer game. Hmm. I have not seen any gameplay of it. You know more. I'll just go for what you say. Okay, yeah, so I've, I've been keeping my eye on this for this, since the moment it actually either showed off some actual gameplay things. So the setup is, is that it's kind of a two teams against each other game. The setup is you basically have to collect enough Wumpa Fruit and put it back to your base, and whoever gets the most amount wins the round. Um, the way it works is that each character has also like different abilities. So I think like Crash Dingo are kind of like the best sort of like speed-based stuff, and then Coco and maybe I think Cortex, whatever. I like defense things so they can defend off stuff. So if you've ever played, if you've seen ever play like any big multiplayer match games, it's like everyone has a different class and ability. You have a big area, so different things. Like one thing I discovered was in the game, you can collect relics. And the idea of the relics is that if you collect enough, you can activate these certain little things. One being like a little boost thing that can allow you to jump over a level. Another one allows you to activate, say, oxide in the environment so he can then you know beam up other people another one particularly that if you get enough you can summon uka uka and basically all of your all of your player characters will be have the mask but also will rain down fire on the other players basically you know what it sounds like go on 
10 minutes of fun followed by forgetfulness. Yeah, that's the key thing about this. Um, it's like it's sell it, it's focused way too much on the fact that it's it's a team based multiplayer game. Hmm. I'm pretty much I'm sure there's going to be a story mode. I'm sure there's going to be bots, and you're going to hate the bots. <laughs> I mean, but it sure... sounds it's so paper thin. Yeah, I mean, can... compared to Crash Bash, hmm. it, Crash Bash sounds more fun. I mean, I'm, I'm going to say... unless. Unless that's only really one type of game, and there's more games other than just the, it reminds you like either a cross between Catch the Flag, and this one ball game from the American Gladiators. <laughs> yeah, I'll give it credit. I mean, Crash Bros did have some variety of like the different type of games you could play, whereas this is much more of a sort of a team against team type thing. And obviously, it's I guess the idea is that it's pretty much like the get moment to moment gameplay thing of like just how much you can accumulate and can you keep this stuff enough. I mean. A lot of games I've seen in multiplayer, it's like part of it is like the challenge of can I, you know, I have to get this object, but I have to stand here for like 30 seconds. Can I do this without getting hit type deal? That seems to be the, the route they're going with this one. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of Fall Guys, and at least Fall Guys had some different uh, games to it, but it was still ultimately the same thing, just survive as long as you can. This one yeah, is- survive as long as you can, you know, yeah. Kind of the same um, thing is that sounds so paper thin that the only reason it will keep going if a, it's a free-to-play game, and it's going to be entirely based on cosmetics. Yeah, they have mentioned obviously there's going to be like things you can unlock skins and hats and you know different things. There's actually a new one of the weird figures, obviously. Like this goes back to even the initial like teasing was new characters. Like one of them was a bat, uh, kind of like a punk rock bat, which is in the game. Uh, I can't remember the name as I speak, but yeah, that's like a new character introduced here. No idea who it is or what. I don't know if it's a male or female. So there you go. Um, female. It's like. Yeah, I mean, it's called Cat Bat, so I'm guessing it's a cross between a, a cat and a bat. It's like Willaroo, who, all, <laughs> who only appeared ever in Crash Bash until CTR Nitro Field, when he had two versions of himself, because they <laughs> fucked up on the design. Yeah, well, I was... Hmm. It's interesting that they haven't put him in here. I mean, funny enough, they put in the female entropy in the game, surprisingly enough, although I don't know if the male one's in here. I think he's in the game. But... I'm pretty sure it'll be every character that appeared in Crash 4, and it'll be some revised versions of classic characters because i would be surprised if we do see like willaroo and uh uh pan chan from oh yeah Cat 3d yeah well depending if they have to redesign them i will i mean this is another thing about it is that all the time it's been like teased and whatever like going ages back i remember they did a video where it was like crush and coco like playing uncharted 4 and the location they're in that wasn't seen in crush 4 but it is in the game it's like a little like deck terror area i think it's called tiki towers i think Mm-hmm. So that is something it's been a, it has been around for a bit, that location. But I even remember at the time thinking, is this just recycle assets? I mean, it's funny how people go on about like, oh, Sonic Forge is over, just reusing everything for previous games. How oh, lazy! It's like this one is reusing a lot. I mean, like it's the same models, the same animations. You know, the big difference is like the locations and some of the mechanics in there. But it's like it is basically reusing a lot of Crash Wars stuff. And again, they still work. I'm not saying it's completely, you know. The best way of reusing assets is like if you can still use them in the way that works for the game. That's that's what you do, guys. That's how these things get made because it takes a lot of time and effort to make this stuff, folks. Yeah, I'm always surprised if this comes out free to play because they're charging money to buy this. Then again, it's Activision. I'm well, sure. they're already doing well as we speak. They're doing a thing where if you pre-order it, you can play the beta thing of it, so you can try out a few of the levels and stuff. Which, again, every time they do see it in action, is like I probably will have a bit of fun. Though that said, the last time I tried that. A sort of beta of a big multiplayer game was Worms Rumble. Ironically, another Rumble game, but uh, I really sucked to that. I gotta admit, I mean, that was one of those like I could not hold my own for quite a while. I would often get killed, you know, a minute or two into a match. Yeah, also, the fact that it's a multiplayer game and probably primarily a multiplayer only game, if they ever have a solo solo feature, mm. is I don't like online multiplayer. I don't yeah, care. If, I don't care if it's easier. I don't care if you get more people to play with you. I prefer if I'm playing multiplayer, either A, it's co op and you have to work together, like in Gears yeah. of War. I like that. Yeah. Or B, I'm in the same room. So if they take my freaking style with Boo, I can actually punch them in the nose. Yeah. I mean, that is the thing that's been pointed out. I think at the moment, the game isn't like co op multiplayer in your lounge, apparently. So it's, uh, it's not going to do any offers. Um, I mean, hell, I remember when they did that with Halo 5, you know, people were quite pissed off about it because a lot of people really liked playing the game with a 
couch mates and whatever. So it's like, yeah, guys, that's you better rectify that when this thing comes out. Yeah, if you're going to do multiplayer, never omit couch multiplayer. Mm. Never do that. No, no. It's like, go multiplayer. Okay, can I have my friends over? No, what are you talking about? It's online only. This is the future. It's like, yeah, in the future, in the future I see you with a pair of very hot, white hot stirrups around your crotch area. So, mm. put it back in. Yeah. I mean, I'm curious if they will come up with, a, as you say, like a single player mode, like even a narrative. I mean, for as much as Crash Team Racing, you know, the irony is like, it's not the greatest narrative in the world, but there's a premise, there's an excuse to why this is all happening type stuff. There, there was and, a, a adventure mode and a multiplayer mode were given equal amounts of attention. Exactly, yeah. I mean, again, it's like, at the end of the day, you could argue... Yeah, let's let's make these tracks. Is it fun to play multiplayer? Yep. Ball player mode? Yeah. All right, let's make an adventure field with it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it was just a way of basically how do you link all these separate tracks into a, a single cohesive thing? It's like, well, if we have a narrative excuse to why this is all happening, why the characters are in the cars, it's like, again, it's not necessary, but it's a nice addition. So I would be surprised if Rumble does have one because I, I don't know what excuse you can come up with to say, why do they yeah, have even, to? Even in fact, Smash Bros have a single player option. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, it varies from game so to game. Technically, Melee, Brawl, and Ultimate do. Yeah, I mean, they do vary in terms of how much effort they put into it, but that's a whole other thing. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes, but I'm not... It is not looking to be a Crash game, you know, worth getting day one. No. I mean, put it this way, it's like, if it does well, fine. I mean, I'll, I'll, if anything else, I'll just wait until when Crash 5 pops up, so I'm not I'm not hurting you. Or Spiral 4. Yes. <laughs> Still waiting on that one. Yeah, so we'll, uh, we'll, wait, we'll keep our eye for that one. A surprise game was announced, which, mind you, would never talk about this game unless it did something different and unexpected and familiar. Mm. And it's mm. Lego 2K Drive. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, want, like Lego games, are, Lego games have been a dime a dozen. Like every IP has Lego. We mm -hmm. recently had... There's been a lot of Lego games, like Lego Worlds, Lego Builders, mm -hmm. and uh, recent, and also the Skywalker Saga, which completely retooled the entire original complete saga and added in the sequel trilogy, sequel trilogy as well as the spin-offs like Mandalorian and Clone Wars. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, so Lego's got a lot of resurgence in the gaming community right now, and now we have Lego 2K Drive, and yes, mm -hmm. it is a 2K driving game with Lego. Yes. <laughs> and by that, it means you, it's essentially, you combine 2K driving games mm -hmm. with Lego Racers, which is a fan favorite title. Yeah, that's something from years ago. And Sonic All Stars Racing Transform. <laughs> I did say that. I literally said to you, like, this, they clearly took cues from that. I know people have been saying Mario Kart was like, no, this is Transform's gimmick of, you know, you go from. To, to, actually, to actually squash that that rumor and conspiracy theory, like, oh, yeah, Sonic has copied Mar Mario Kart 7. <laughs> like, no. They were in development at the same time. Yeah. And. Mario Kart was shown off first before they could actually show off anything or transformed. Mm. And like, oh shit. <laughs> it, I mean, was, to be it, fair. it was complete co coincidence yeah. that they were working on two, that Nintendo and Sumo Digital were working on a game that involved racing and transforming vehicles. Yeah. Although I can say Transform went further with its whole thing. I mean, Mario, it was kind of like you had the glider and a bit of a thing, but it was short burst. Whereas, and they were like, no, you do a track on the ground and then you do a track in the air and then a track on the water, you know, and it will change depending on how many laps. Yeah. You know, apparently, Mario Kart 7 is the second worst Mario Kart game. <laughs> oh, really? wow. Super wow. Circuit being the worst, apparently. Okay. <laughs> I'm surprised, really, because I don't know anyone actually owned a copy of Super Circuit. Yeah. But anyway, so, it'll like a yeah, no, it's yeah. You race around. Apparently, it seems to be open world as well. So throw in Burnout Paradise. Yeah, I mean the term is basically Metro Burnout Paradise mixed in with Mario Kart. That seems to be the the sort of hot words to use for the game. Yeah, and you transform your vehicle between um, mainly car and boat. Not the yeah. cinema, but but you seem to change your vehicle does change up for instance you can have like a, a traditional racing car like when you're on tarmac and then it will turn into like more like a off-road one you're on like dirt tracks like a dirt bike and then when you're in water it turns into a jet boat basically 
Yeah, when I saw the trailer, I went down to the comments, it's like, yeah, this seems like all stars. And I saw one comment, I just, I just burst out laughing, and it just said, you don't need a license to drive a sandwich. <laughs> it's like, God damn it! Oh, God. I wouldn't be surprised if that joke's in the game, given the fact that actually there, you can drive a hamburger in this game, actually. That's one of the things you can do. Another thing you could point out is actually this game allows you to build your own vehicle, so... Again, yeah, that's why I mentioned like that's why it's also like a racer is because you could build your own vehicle in that. If you could build it, you will brace it. Yeah. In fact, I will say that aside from All Stars Racing Transform, the other thing this game reminded me of instantly was Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. As in, again, that allowed you to basically use simple blocks and whatever to build your own vehicle and then test them out in the, during the environment. And of course, the thing is, it's ironic. We've had so many Lego games over the years, but not a lot of them really encouraged the whole building aspect, apart from I would say Lego Worlds and. Even the Lego movie game tie-in, they had small sections where you had to like put things into certain places in instruction parts, but it's like they don't... It was used as a visual gimmick, and it was an actual game. Actual it was, yeah. But like I said, they rarely have added the point of, you know, building them for real, and this one actually does allow you to, you know, you can use different bricks and different types and put them into certain places to what your heart's delight, basically, from the look of it. Yeah, I would be surprised if I actually some special bricks. Like, there's weight class, how much brick you use for a weight class, and mm -hmm. certain special ones, yeah. like, this give you boost, this gives you more armor. Like, I'm yeah. surprised if you get knocked into something, you lose your bricks. Yeah, I mean, I have seen some footage where you can ram off cars, you know, it's very much like burnout. In fact, you can even have, like, burnout, like, burnouts. You know, your car will crash in slow-mo, and all the bricks will fall out before you get back into the race. So, yeah, that is... That is I would just love for that, just to see... The little fig, mini fig just fly off. <laughs> For what I've seen, the mini fig stays in the little like sitting area, it doesn't fly out. But who knows? Maybe someone will put that in the game later on. Um, It'll be magic, I guarantee you. Yeah, I mean, funny enough, going back to what we said about story mode and racing games, this game does have a narrative in it. As in, you're a new driver coming to this, you know, racing course, you have to beat this new villain. Which again, you will meet different characters and stuff. Again, it's not necessary, but it's a nice inclusion to the game. And it reminds me of Lego Racers too, because that had a narrative as well about meeting different races as rivals. Yeah, that's the thing in the game. You have different rivals you have to beat, and they have like their own speeches and dialogue and like little cinematics where they show off like what makes them so unique or whatever. So again, it's just a nice added incentive to what is what could just be just a box standard racing game, which again as a video from a guy called Racer, who I follow quite a bit, who talked about, uh, you know, the fact that racing games, like, there's some really good ones, but if you take the base ones like F1 or Tocker or, you know, the main lines sort of racing stuff, they're kind of all the same. They look the same. They act the same. Unless you've got a new spin, there's not a lot to them. So the fact that when this got announced, like, I think a week after his video came out, it was like, oh, he will love this. He will love this. Like, yeah, we're doing something kind of crazy with it. Yeah. I look forward to this. It's probably not going to be an instant for me because I can't really play Lego games. Hmm. The last, I mean, the Lego game, is... last Lego game, I, game I played was Skywalker Saga, but that because I had the Game Pass on Xbox. Right, okay. Um, funny enough, actually, this game isn't developed by TT. In fact, the last few games that have been out there, this wasn't developed by Travel Tales. This is by uh, Visual Creative, I think. But apparently, they're mainly done for like doing like WWE and sports games, so it's kind of odd that they're doing a racing game. But either way, it's like I have seen other people taking these there's another game i've played called the builder's journey which is it's kind of i guess you could call it like i wouldn't call it a walkie simulator but it's some sort of one and done game where it uses the mechanic of you know building a pathway for your character to move on but it does complexity of how you do it and how the bricks change so i have started to see as you say there is this resurgence of people using lego in gaming in a unique way that isn't just the kind of you know the standardized traveler's tales ones we've seen in the past few years I probably will eventually get it. I won't be surprised if this was a day one Game Pass thing. If it comes on Game Pass day one, I will get the yeah. month pass and just play it. Because I yeah. played Hot Wheels on there when it came out, and that was, uh, that was surprisingly fun. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. I really need to check that game out. There is, like, different editions of this. You get box standard, deluxe. Of course, the different editions. A game comes out with, new, with well, yeah, one yeah. edition. It's like, I'm sorry, what are you doing? Are you ill? <laughs> it's just standard of gaming today. There has to be three <laughs> versions. Put a basic, a silver, and a gold. Unless yeah. you're Ubisoft, which case you have to have a freaking flow chart. Exactly, yeah. I mean, there's only at least three, thankfully, for the moment. Although I think it was even a pre-order, like, different vehicles. Like, oh, yeah, one that. for 60, one for 80, and one for 100. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. The only thing that does worry me, though, is that they have announced that you can't, apparently, you can create different vehicles, but you can't share them online at the moment. Although they are doing, again, a roadmap thing of DLC, so who knows? They might change. I'm surprised we kind of like Sonic Forces, where you can rent them. 
Hmm. Yeah. Who knows? Like, uh, you can't own it, but you can rent it for a race or something. Yeah. They've also admitted saying that in the game there is like a there is like a currency thing you can collect. You know, like in the previous games, like studs, you can get like little brick, basically dollars. But there are apparently they say you can use that or use real money to buy stuff, which is not a good decision. But again, I am curious to see this, and I'll t I'll give you this. If there's enough like a parts in this that I can use, I'm totally going to try and build a star bug out of this game. I'm going to try that. <laughs> uh, car bug. Yeah. Oh, car bug. Yeah. If I fail that, I'll go with car bug. Yeah. Um. Last but not least for this is especially for me because this is my my jam. Yeah, you can gush about this. Yeah, is the thirtieth anniversary of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers is coming up, and for that we are getting a reunion of the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers called Once and Always, hmm. featuring um, um, Walter Jones and um, David Jose as Billy and Zach, also Steve Cardenas, as Catherine Sutherland, and. A bunch, a bunch of actors as well, such as Johnny Young Bosch as well, even though he's in a cameo role rather than being Adam. Yeah. Well, Black Ranger Adam. He's still Adam, it's just not Black Ranger yeah. Adam. Zach, yeah, Walter yeah, yeah. Jones as Zach, as Zach is Adam. Yeah. And, yeah, it's like, this is still Power Rangers, and it's like, Rita comes back to, as a robot. Yeah. The, <laughs> in the trailer, they kill off Trini, which, for, you, for people throw their arms, like, well, why do you call Trini? The actress, actress of Trini, Sui Trang, died in 2001 in the car crash. That's why. Oh, uh, right, okay. But they have her daughter. So um, they are honoring Trini. It's just, it's not Trini. It's, a, it's one of those workarounds. It's like, how do we acknowledge this fictionally when the real world stuff happens in type deal? It's one of those dig things. Yeah. So... And also, there's going to be some kind of time dilation where we go back in time to stop them from being Power Rangers. Mm -hmm. But it's just seeing modern day Power Rangers, but it's the classic Power Rangers, at least, you know, season one and two. Yeah, that seems to be it, It's there. weird seeing, you know, Billy, Zach interact with Rocky and Cat. Because. <laughs> Yeah, Zach and Rock, Rocky were never on the screen at the same time. Right, okay. Because uh, when they started introducing um, Adam, Rocky, and uh, Aisha, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Walter, Joey Trang, and Austin St. Jones, they, they left. They walked, mm -hmm. they walked away because they apparently were getting paid more at McDonald's than it would be pl what, acting on that show. Oh, bloody hell. It, oh, was, that, it was that bad. Wow! Wow! They, they walked off, so you'll hear, you'll see like body doubles, repeat shot, um, um, stock footage of them, and even yeah. voiceovers that don't sound anything alike. <laughs> oh god, that's the worst case scenario. You try and they try. They gave Trini an accent. <laughs> we, we, we trying. She didn't have an accent. She spoke in fluent English with no accent. Right. So that that yeah. was weird, especially when we went, we watched season two. Yeah. So that's why when the Change the powers over to sort of light. That's why they were still in that in the you know range outfits when they left. Yeah. So it's good to see the, see you know season one and season two actors in the same role. Mm -hmm. But yeah. also the thing as well, and I haven't talked about this because it still upsets me, is that even though we see the Green Ranger in the trailer footage, mm -hmm. we did lose Jason David Frank about a month ago. Yeah, yeah. And it hurts me every time I think about that. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just, it, I just always wanted to meet him. I've always, every time I went to um, the memorabilia with you, I always hoped to actually meet him, but he was never there. Yeah, that was the thing. Yeah. So, yeah, it's kind of weird. It's kind of weird watching stuff now where you see the actor and I'm no longer alive. Yeah. Like, old old stuff. Fair enough. I can I can get get used to that. Like they that they, they had their time. Like um. Gene Wilder. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. I mean, how it works. Comes to Jesse David Frank, Carrie Fisher. Mm. Like, even even before then, we had that Kevin Conroy passed away. Yeah, that's another person we've lost as well. You, you have no idea how heartbreaking it is to hear my wife say, in tears, Batman's dead. Mm. That hurt. Mm. God, I was yeah. so pissed off that day. I was so pissed off. 
Yeah, I did read. Uh, funny enough, I was reading an Empire magazine. There was a a, a little feature talking about a Mass of the Phantasm, and Mark Hamill was like recalling stories about you know when they when they had the film because it was shown in the states in cinemas, but nobody knew it was even out. So he had to coerce people on the streets to like, no, come on, come on, watch this movie, and you know that type of deal. But he also mentioned how the fact that you know for ages he's always talked about you know oh I might retire or whatever, but he's always said I keep playing the Joker because I get to work with Kevin. Now he's no longer with us. It's like I don't have that interest anymore i don't think i can play the joker at least if kevin's no longer with me mm. um, that's the only reason why he came back for the killing joke because kevin conroy was batman yeah i mean it was the case of these two get to basically say the lines from the graphic novel basically at least the bits that people actually liked but anyway um again i'm kind of curious how they're going to handle you know back to power rangers i'm curious how they're going to handle the green ranger stuff i mean isn't it, I, I can't remember there's no footage of the white ranger anywhere he's not anywhere in this no no so I'm, curious. so I'm assuming they're going to do what they did with um, uh, Dino Thunder. Well, in, Dino, say- in Dino Thunder, there was this series of episodes where he could, where Tommy could not unmorph from from the Black Ranger. Right. Real world reason because he went back from New Zealand to America to be with his family, but he still did mm. voiceover. Yeah. So I'm assuming we're going. To, if it's going to be in the past, so it's going to be stock footage and stock voices. Well, again, if they're going to do it as like this happened in the past or like a recreation of what happened, again, what you said with the previous actor who's passed away, it's like they found a narrative reason why they're no longer in it. Again, if they're going to do that with, with the Green Ranger here. Yeah, I know for a fact they did a comic called Soul of the Dragon where apparently him being a Power Ranger with a Master Morpher was killing him. Yeah, okay. Yeah, they did a Logan thing. with, with Okay, <laughs> Right, okay. Uh. Well, I'm because despite that knowledge, I am still looking forward to this because I am honestly, I blame Linkara for this. I really blame Linkara for this. <laughs> Linkara, I, 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 I want to kick him in the nuts and yet hand, hand him a freaking ice pack. <laughs> you never know where to kick. It's whether to hug him or punch him in the face, basically, the type deal. It's like, thank you for reading my love of Power Rangers, but I hate you for reminding me now. He's the reason why every time I went to Marabillo year, I always look for freaking power. Morphers. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. You know, don't you know? I'm pretty sure you own every morpher now. Isn't that a thing? You at least own at least one of every I'm morpher. Missing, I'm missing like 20 plus because they keep making new ones with new seasons. Right. Okay. <laughs> so I got the latest ones. I've got the Dino Fury morpher and the Dino Knight morpher. Right. Okay. So I've got the latest ones. I don't have Zeo the Zeo morphers. I don't have Turbo. Turbo is one of the hardest ones to freaking find. Mm-hmm. Not, not the most expensive, the most expensive one to find is the Titanium Morpher from Lightspeed. Right. That's like $200. Oh, God. Dear Lord. Oh. There's also the uh, Magna Defender Morpher, which he didn't have a Morpher in the Sentai. That Morpher is from Dire Ranger, and that's what the White Ranger would have used. You're right. Okay. So, yeah, there's a lot of Morphers I'm missing because they're that hard to find. Oh, dear. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm guessing from what we've seen of so far of this is special is presumably they filmed everything themselves. You know, obviously they filmed the guys in the suits and all the action stuff. They're not using any stock footage for this type deal, aren't they? Yeah, there's even new footage from the from the from, from the Dano Megazord as well. Yeah, no, I mean, presumably they're obviously the the CG, but they're meant to look like you know stuff the costume things, which is it's a cool. I will say that they make. I'm pretty up. sure. I think there's got to be some CG overlay, but I'm pretty sure it's still a guy in a suit. All right then, okay. But like I said, I will say that did me go. Oh, that's kind of cool. If I actually still own like my original um, original Megazord toy, actually to this day, it's got a few bits missing, but um, I still have that bad boy lying around. I've got a legacy version, and I haven't taken it out of the box. I've only taken it out of the box twice. <laughs> In yeah. eight years, I've taken it out of the box twice. Wow! <laughs> wow! But uh, again, I mean, it's the one thing I've noticed... on I think, April sixteenth, April nineteenth, it comes out. Yeah, it's gonna be. I'm just gonna sit there with my kids and watch it because my kids love Power Rangers as well. I know. I mean, that's the thing that surprised me the most is that you are really bringing this to a new generation of kids, and the fact they're able to enjoy it probably the way you did as a kid, and now they're able to pass it. Essentially, I wanted to. I wanted to rewatch Power Rangers from the beginning. Yeah, because yeah. it was all on Netflix. I watched through season one through up to Turbo. Yeah, and we skipped most of Turbo. Turbo anyway. Okay. You you have not suffered to so try sitting through Turbo. <laughs> to be fair, I did stop watching it by the time Turbo probably came out anyway, so I was like, I don't have much memory of that series, so there you go. 
but got the kids into it. Then um, we then Dino Fury came out, and we watched all of that because Jacob really wanted to watch it, watch it as well. <laughs> Uh, does he have like a favorite ranger? Is there anyone particular he likes, or is he just likes all of them? He likes all of them. He's like when he rec- recognizes Power Rangers, he knows his Power Rangers. Okay. <laughs> He's like those excuses for kids where from parents are like, "Where was where are the Samurai Rangers? Why are they why are they not here?" But because <laughs> if you watched Power Rangers, you know that ever since 1998 they changed it up. Every mm-hmm. season is a new season. Except now, because Cosmic Fury is coming out, it's, it's the exact same team as Dan- Dano Fury, except it's a sequel series like Zio. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> They're doing sequel series again. Not the, yeah. oh, it's the same series, but it's just the second half of the story, but we had to add Super into the title. Oh, they're doing that thing, are they? It's, it's like what they did with Pokemon. They went from Advance, Advance Battle, Advance Challenge. You know, it's like, it's still the same thing. That's what they did from, well, I guess, the Neo Saban era Samurai through uh, Ninja Steel with the second yeah. season. Had to have Super in the title to make it seem like a separate season, but it wasn't. Yeah. It was just more, more of the show. Or- yeah, just except Mega Force, in which case it was two sentizing one. Right. <laughs> that, that was so painful to sit through. Ugh. Just watch Super, was... just watch the legendary battle at the end, and that's it. Just watch the DVD version. Right. <laughs> but then you'll see the only one time in the entire run of Mega Force you'll see light speed. Right. Only time. <laughs> light speed blue. That's right. the only time you see that that representation that that season that show. Okay. Anyway, uh, enough enough fanboy, enough ranting. Just yeah, yeah. Power Rangers once and always comes out yeah. later on Netflix in April. Yeah. Looking forward to it. I'm probably going to freak out. I'll probably do a podcast on it. You know. Yeah, I mean, I'll probably like this. It, <laughs> yeah, I mean, probably this way. I'll probably give it a watch for shits and giggles. I only ask these things. One is, I'll. Is there any notion that Bulk and Skull are going to be in this? Or is there any hint no, of that? No, there isn't. There isn't. Okay, all right. Uh, okay, but I will say the one it, thing that did well, kind There of... is one thing you might be interested in, is that the didn't it did not get the original voices for Alpha. No. Which I guess at this point it's probably Alpha 7, or even a re- reconstructed <laughs> of, of the Alpha 6. Yeah, I'm pretty curious how they're going to tie that up. But anyway, go on. It's not the original one, even one of the original voice actors. It's the, the guy who did Invader Zim. Yeah, that guy. I recognized his voice. I think, oh, you got him. And it's like, yeah, he fits. Yeah, he can do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think you were not right. alpha. Yeah. You're not, alpha, you're, not even, you're not even in space alpha six, okay? All right. <laughs> I mean, at this point, I mean, I mean come on. You know what? God forbid, I'm thankful you're not the alpha from Operation Overdrive. Okay. Ooh, that a bad one. Oh, that was terrible. All right. I mean, at this point, I'll take I, I, I. I mean, at this point, it's his trademark catchphrase. There's also a song about Alpha as well. <laughs> oh, I, God, for, I, I completely forgot there was a song on Power Rangers, and it was Alpha's song. Oh, God, I'm going to check that at some point. <laughs> I, 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 I. <laughs> it's a real song. It's a real song. Uh, I'll be up there with Marvin, the Paranoid Android song, so why not? <laughs> 